Today's objectives are divisibility rules and greatest common factor, which is also known as the greatest common divisor. I believe that's how the sixth grade book says it. There are some easy rules you can learn to check if one number can be divided evenly by the numbers 2 through 10. Really, except 7. We're not doing 7. These are called divisibility rules. Please copy this chart, and then you can watch it as we go over and talk about it and add in some examples. So pause it now and copy the chart. Okay, now you should be back. So let's talk about the number and the rule. For the number 2, the rule is the last digit is an even number. This means the number ends in a 2, 4, 6, 8, or 0. That makes it an even number. For 5, the rule is the last digit is a 5 or a 0. For 10, the last digit is a 0. These are the three easiest rules. Okay, that's why I grouped them not in order but by ease. This one is not easy, but it's okay. For four, the last two digits are divisible by four. So for example, if you had the number 124, you just have to look at the 24. If four goes into 24, it'll also go into 124. For eight, it's the last three digits divisible by eight. This is probably the hardest one because you still have to divide into three numbers. But if I have the number, um, let's say 480, I check, does 8 go into 480? Well, does 8 go into 48? Yes, it does. And so that would, it would also go into 480 because of the zero. All right, these next two rules are pretty fun. The divisibility rule for three is the sum of the digits. If you add up the digits and that number is divisible by three, then the whole number is divisible by three. So for example, if I have um, 87, I could do eight plus seven equals 15. Does three go into 15 evenly? Yes, it does. Then it will also go into 87. You could, if you wanted to, also add the 1 plus 5. What's 1 plus 5? 6. Does 3 go into 6? Yes. So it goes in there. It goes into 87. The rule for 9 is the same thing, but it's the sum of the digits is divisible by 9. So if I have the number, um, let's do 351, we do 3 plus 5 plus 1. 3 plus 5 is... 8 plus 1 is 9. 9 goes into 9, so 9 also goes into 351. Those are pretty cool, I think. Okay, and number 6 is also pretty easy. If your number is divisible by 2 and 3, then it's divisible by 6, which means it's an even number and the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. One other thing I want to point out is every number that's divisible by 9 is also divisible by 3 because 3 goes into 9, but not the other way, because 9 does not go into 3. 9 is bigger than 3. All right, let's check divisibility for these three numbers. So take a minute and write this chart down. Write number 1, 450. Number 2, 3,612. Number 3, 81,248. And then put <clears throat> 2, 5, 10, because those are the easiest. 3, 9, those are pretty easy, 6, because you need to know 2 and 3, and then 4, 8 along the top. Okay, I'll stop the video and do that now. Okay, hopefully you're back. Let's see what num the divisibility rules for each of these. And when I have a bunch to do, I do the rule for each one, because I have to remember the rule. So the rule for 2 is the last digit is an even number. Is 0 an even number? Yep. What about 2? What about 8? There's a lot, half the numbers are even numbers, right? So all of them are even numbers. Now, in order for 5 to go into a number evenly, the number has to end in a 5 or a 0. Number 1, does it end in a 5 or a 0? Yep. Number 2? Nope. Number 3? Nope. Because it ends in a 2 and an 8, right? Okay, for 10, 
the last digit has to be a zero. Well, this is the only number that the last digit's a zero. Now for three, the sum of the digits has to be divisible by three. What's four plus five? Nine. Is nine divisible by three? Yep. And when I do three and nine, I like to do them at the same time because I've already added a, up my digits. So four plus five was nine. Does nine go into nine? Yep. Okay, now let's do three for this number, 3,612. Three plus six is nine, plus one is 10, plus two is 12. Does three go into 12? Yes, it does, four times. Does nine go into 12 evenly? No, okay. Now let's do 81,248. I'm going to add eight plus two because that makes 10. So I'm gonna say 10 plus one is 11, plus four is 15, 15 and eight is 23. Does three go into 23? Nope. Does nine go into it? No, if three doesn't go into it, there's no way nine can go into it, okay? Just because three goes into nine. So now let's check six. In order for six to work, two has to go into it and three has to go into it. So does two go into both, uh, does two and three go into both 450? Yep. Does two and three both go into 3,612? Yep. Uh, two goes into this number, but three doesn't, so that means six doesn't. So I'm kind of going through this uh, a little bit fast. Um, you need to be looking at your divisibility notes, but we're gonna do these in class, so this isn't your only chance, okay? Now let's check four. For four, we look at the last two digits. Does four go evenly into 50? No. Does four go evenly into 12? Yes. Does four go evenly into 48? Yes. Four times 12 is 48. Okay, almost done. Last one is eight. So does eight go into 450? Well, here's another hint. If four doesn't go into the number, eight doesn't go into the number. Just the same as with three and nine, okay? So we don't have to check this first number because four doesn't go into it, but we do have to check these two. So I need to see if eight goes into 612. Sometimes I just do a little math problem. Eight into 612. Eight goes into 61 seven times, 56. And that would be 52. Does eight go into 52? Nope. So that means eight doesn't go into this number. Now let's check if eight goes into this number. So I need to divide eight into the last three digits. So I'm gonna say eight into 248. Oh, this looks promising. Does eight go into 24? Uh-huh. Does eight go into eight? Uh-huh. So that means eight goes into this number. Divisibility rules come in handy when you are simplifying, which means reducing in this case, different types of problems. You will be using them in math, okay? So you don't, honestly, eight is probably the least used, and four, if you divide by two, you can just do it twice, and that's the same as dividing by four. But these are pretty common. These are pretty handy in here. All right, one more thing. Greatest common factor, also known as greatest common divisor. A factor is a piece of a multiplication problem. Seven times eight equals 56. Seven times eight are the factors. 56 is the product. We've been talking about the word product, sum, quotient, uh, difference, but we haven't talked about the pieces. We've only been talking about the answers. You can list the factors in a T-chart to make sure you get them all. You begin with one and then count up in order. So for example, list all the factors of eight. So I just make a T-chart, I don't write anything on the top, and I start with one, and I just go down the side. One times eight. What's after one? Two. Two times four. Does three go into eight? No. Does four? Yes. But I already have it written down, so I don't have to write it again. Once I get to a number that's on the other side, I'm done. So the factors of eight are one times eight, and I just write them with a dot, and two times four. Let's do another one. 
list all the factors of 24. So I make my t-chart and I start with 1. 1 times 24, 2, does it go in? Yes, because it's an even number. 2 times 12, does 3 go in? Well, we could do the divisibility rules, but let's just divide. Yes, 3 times 8, does 4 go in? Yes, 4 times 6, does 5 go in? No, because it doesn't end in a 0 or a 5. Does 6 go in? Yes, because 2 and 3 went in. But I already have 6 written down, so I'm finished. So the factors of 24 are 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and 4 times 6. All right, so now we've got down factors. Now we're going to talk about the greatest common factor. To find the greatest common factor of two or more numbers, you need to know really what it is you're looking for. So greatest is the biggest possible number. Common means it's in both, or if you have more than two, all numbers. Okay, so it has to be in both of them. And factor is if you multiply it with another number, you're gonna get your number back. So it has to be smaller than your real number. If we, were, if we were talking about the number 7, what are the factors of 7? You would just say 1 times 7. You wouldn't tell me 14 or 21 because those are multiples. We're not talking about multiples today, just factors. So I would like to find the greatest common factor of 18 and 12. There's two ways you can do it. Well, there's a lot, but I'm just going to talk about two, okay? Number one, you can list all the factors in t-charts and compare and write down the biggest one. Or number two, you can use the ladder method, which I will describe in just a minute, okay? So for 18, I'm going to list all the factors in my t-chart. So I made a t-chart and I said one times 18. Does two go in? Yes, it's an even number, two times nine. Does three go in? Yes, three times six. Does four go in? No, five, no, six, yes, because two and three did, but we already have six written down, so we're done. We don't duplicate, okay? Let's do the factors for 12. 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. Does 4 go in? Yes, and we have it written down, so we're done. So what is the biggest factor in both t-charts? 1's in both, 2's in both, 3 is in both. I mean, ignore that 4 because it's not here. 6 is in both. Okay, all that's left here is 12, here 9 and 18. So the biggest one in both of these is the 6. So the greatest common factor is 6. Now let's use a, um, the ladder method. There's a lot of writing, but it's really pretty easy, okay? So you write the numbers side by side. That's the lunchtime bell, but I'm just going to keep going. <clears throat> you make an upside down division symbol around the numbers. You divide out the common factors, making this each time. You stop when only one goes into both numbers, and then you multiply the numbers along one side. So hold on one second. Wait outside for just a minute and have the kids wait outside. I need to get this done. Okay, so I'm gonna write 18 and 12, and then I'm going to make the line around it. I did. Now what's a number that goes into both 18 and 12? Let's say um, three. Let's say 3 and write it down. 3. 3 goes into 18 six times. 3 goes into 12 four times. Is there another number that will go into 6 and 4? Yes. What? 2. 2 goes into 6 how many times? 2 goes into 4 how many times? Is there a number that will go into 2 and 3 besides 1? No. So we stop when only 1 goes into both numbers and then we multiply them. What is 2 times 3? 6. So 2 times 3 equals 6. So 6 is my greatest common factor. So it's just a coincidence that that's on the bottom. All right, let's do one more. Find the greatest common factors of 20 and 36. So let's compare and see which method you like. All right, so for 20, I'm going to write 1 times 20, 2 times 10. Does 3 go in? No. 4 times 5. Does 5 go in? Yes, and I've already written it down, so I have all of them. For 36, 1 times 36, 
2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9, 5, no, 6 times 6. And if you ever have a duplicate, you know you're done. So what's the biggest one that's in all of them? 1's in them, 2's in them, 4's in them. Oh, 4's the biggest one. Okay, so that took a little bit of work. Look for this one, the ladder. Think of a number that goes into 20 and 36. Well, I can think of 2, but I also see that 4 does. 4 goes into 25 times, and 4 goes into 36 9 times. Does anything go into these numbers besides 1? No. So I'm done. The greatest common factor is 4. So even though it took a lot to write down the ladder, I prefer the ladder because it's shorter. And we will do these in class. That's it.